Small seeded cover crops like this are incredibly easy work with this drone. We can do 10 acres on a tank load of 34 pounds. <laughs> so you can get a lot of work done when you're doing very small seeded cover crop um, with the Agris T50 or T25. They have the same systems on the spreader side. Now the T25 will hold about 60 pounds as a T50 right now that we're flying. Uh, this will hold about 110 to 120 pounds of cover crop seed. So if you've got small seeded cover crop, just don't put your tank all the way up and you can do a lot more. If you have uh, like rye where you're doing 50 pounds per acre, then you can get uh, put a lot more seed in there and you know, put 120 pounds in and get two acres per tank fill. So while we're flying here, we're going to have a long time before this thing gets back to us. Let's just talk about what uh, seed you might spread, um, what the differences are in cover crop seed, um, why people use them, uh, when to apply them. Let's just run the gamut here. If you guys aren't familiar with, with cover crop seeding or overseeding cover crop, um, then let's just uh, dive into that. So today we're doing, like I said, uh, turnips and radishes. That is a very popular uh, forage mix. So if you have cattle that you want to turn out into your pasture to graze over winter uh, through the spring, uh, you know, of course, they're going to graze on some of the grass we have right here. Uh, there's going to be some corn, uh, some volunteer corn is going to pop up. That's going to provide some forage for them, but uh, not very high quality forage uh, for cattle. So turnips and radishes, that's going to be a very good mix and they love it. Um, you know, they need, um, lots of nutrients, protein in there for, for cows. Um, and it grows really well if you establish it early. So about timing, right? So. Today is uh, the you know, last half of August and we've got green corn out there still. So we can, we usually apply cover crop anytime between you know, August 1st all the way through uh, November into November, um, depending on what the weather is like. Uh, and different cover crops require different types of weather and soil conditions. Uh, turnips and radishes, it's best to apply those earlier uh, so if you can apply those it's in standing corn like we are now out there then you're going to get germination sooner uh, you're going to have more growth uh, in the fall before winter comes and then it's going to have uh, put on a bigger root mass and much more vegetation um, so that's where drones come in you know why drones why drones for cover crops well traditionally cover crops have been applied either after harvest so you, you harvest your corn you come in with the drill or a fertilizer spreader and you spread cover crop but that limits you on timing uh, the really the only uh, cover crop that guys use uh, you know that method application post harvest ap application uh, is cereal rye cereal rye is the most widely used cover crop because it is so hardy and versatile that you can put it in in november and you'll still get a stand of cereal rye uh, but Drones allow us to do very unique cover crops, like I mentioned earlier, where we have to have um, a bit more growing season, a bit more fall growing season for them to be established, not winter kill. Uh, it also allows us to do very, very light uh, and small seeded cover crops. As you can see right now, um, our tank right now is just under 20 pounds um, per acre, or 20 pounds total in the tank. And so it's putting on just a very, very small amount because we haven't covered that many acres, obviously. And if you did this with a traditional drill or a traditional fertilizer spreader, uh, it'd be very hard to get such a fine, um, you know, low, low rate. So um, what other, you know, forms of cover crop, uh, what other cover crop seeds might somebody be spreading? Um, a real popular one is clover. Um, and clover, turnips, radishes, uh, rapeseed, um, there's even guys doing penny crests or what they call cover crests. But clover um, is, is a legume just like soybeans are. And so there's a lot of guys now um, who are actually trying to scavenge for nutrients um, with, with clover. Actually trying to uh, provide nitrogen for a corn crop. So whenever your soybean crop is getting pretty close to harvest, then you can apply clover spread clover at about uh, eight, 10 pounds per acre. It will, um, you know, grow through the fall and hopefully, you know, there are different varieties of clover. If you have the right variety, 
it uh, won't winter kill and will actually continue to grow in the spring. And then you get nitrogen benefit because it's going to you know, fixate nitrogen. It's going to take nitrogen from the, from the air, from the atmosphere, uh, fix it, put it into its roots. Then whenever clover dies, uh, then it's going to release that nitrogen into the soil. And corn that does not fix nitrogen, you need a lot of nitrogen for corn. Um, so that's, you know, what, what guys are, are trying to do with cover crop is really see how can we cut our dependency on fertilizer? How can we reduce our dependency on herbicide? Uh, and how can we hold our soil erosion? Those are kind of your, your three big uh, factors when it comes to cover crop is scavenging for nutrients, um, providing a cover so that weeds don't grow, and um, preventing soil erosion. If we just have a clean till field and we're on a slope like this and we get you know, a big five inch rain, then a lot of that black soil on top, which we have so limited of here in Missouri, it's gonna be washing down to the bottom of the hill. If you have a cover crop, those roots are gonna hold that in place. As far as timing goes um, on small seeded cover crops, it really just depends on which one you're doing. Um, the earlier, the better typically. Uh, but a lot of it is weather dependent uh, and of course, you know, crop dependent that you're applying on. So like right now we're spreading uh, where they're chopping silage. And so it's going to be a bare field. And so we're not worried about uh, the sun or the seed getting uh, enough sunlight. It's going to have plenty of sunlight um, after it germinates to grow. Uh, what we are worried about here is moisture. And that's really the biggest thing when it comes to cover crop timing, when to apply is do you have a rain event in the near future? or do you have soil moisture currently? Right now we have a uh, pretty dry field, um, but there are hopefully some chances for rain in the very near future. And with that small seeded cover crop, it takes very, very little rain for it to sprout. We're talking about seed that is, uh, you know, tiny. It's uh, maybe, I don't know, a 10th of a centimeter um, in diameter. And we're talking about putting a 2.2 pounds per acre. So very little seed and it's all very small. So it does not take very little, very much water for it to sprout. You have to have some water. Um, if it sits on the ground for too long, then of course uh, it might not uh, sprout um, or birds might eat it, all that kind of stuff too. And so the quicker it germinates, once it hits that soil, the better typically. If you're going into a standing crop like this, if you're going into standing corn or standing soybeans, uh, then you typically want to wait until that plant has uh, dropped 50% of its leaves or 50% defoliated is what they call that. Um, so usually, you know, a month or maybe three weeks or so prior to harvest. Um, and if you can time it perfectly and hit that window with the rain, then you're going to have, you're going to have uh, cover crop growing while you're harvesting uh, your other crop. And that's ideal. That's what you want, actually. And you want that 50% defoliation because if that crop sprouts, let's say you have good soil moisture underneath your corn canopy, but you have no sunlight, then it's going to sprout and it's going to have no photosynthesis and it can't produce any sugar for the plant. And so then it's just going to die. Um, and that's obviously not what you want. Let's talk about um, as far as if you're doing this as a business, as a service, right? You're actually um, you know, trying to make money applying Cover, uh, cover crops uh, custom for somebody. How do you charge? You know, with liquid application, it's it's easy. It's two gallons per acre typically for like a fungicide application, and two gallons per acre on this field is the same as two gallons per acre on that field, uh, typically, and two gallons per acre of fungicide is the same as two gallons per acre of insecticide. Um, as far as how many acres per hour that you can do traditionally, and so with liquid application. Fungicide in the Midwest and most places uh, on, on row crops, we're usually looking at about $15 an acre as what we're going to uh, be charging for custom work. Now with cover crops, that's a bit different of a story because we're doing 2.2 pounds here, but when we come back actually to this farm uh, just down the road, we're going to be doing 50 pounds per acre. I'm just jumping up and over our, our spreader here, holding up my left stick here um, to or jump up and over the the silage chopper. Uh, don't want to be buzzing them too close. <laughs> so how do you gauge what to charge, you know, somebody per acre? Um, it's, it's really difficult um, 
whenever you're doing a bunch of different types of cover crop like today we've got turnips at 2.2 pounds we've got radishes at 4.4 pounds per acre uh, with the split application that's actually two applications on this field but what i tend to think about is if you want to charge per acre well how many pounds does uh, two gallons weigh two gallons of liquid right it's gonna weigh about 16 pounds so so long as you're 16 or 20 pounds of cover crop or less then 15 bucks an acre is you know tip what you charge because you do have some setup time obviously that is as me fix for every field uh, it's gonna take you a while to get calibrated and whatnot um, and then you're going to have a bit more time in terms of uh, refill and dumping in the product um, but as far as application speed and efficiency your efficiency per you know how many acres per hour you can do 20 gallons or 20 pounds per acre and less is going to be very similar to a two gallon uh, per acre application so 20 pounds cover crop and less about the same as a two gallon per acre application on liquid so that's that's kind of how you figure out a per acre now once you get above that 20 pounds per acre you get into 50 pounds per acre with like let's say cereal rye uh, or you're doing fertilizer at 100 pounds per acre plus uh, then that's where it's very difficult to give uh, a per acre uh, fee or per acre estimate and so we tend to switch to a, a per hour um, ap application fee uh, for any niche applications uh, like that any heavy uh, cover crop like that um, and we tend to charge um, about four hundred dollars per hour because whenever you equate to how many you know acres per hour you can get usually you're around uh, between you know, 30 and 40 acres per hour um, at a two gallon per acre rate or a 20 pound rate with cover crop um, then that breaks out to be you know somewhere around 400 bucks uh, per hour uh, that you would actually um, you know your revenue that you bring in there